All right, what's up everybody? Uh, in this video, we're going to be running a 30 liter still. I'm uh, going to be walking through the process. Uh, excuse the noise in the background. This is an industrial area, so it's a lot of noise going on. Uh, I'll mention that I'm going to be using uh, Fahrenheit, uh, not Fahrenheit, I'm going to be using Celsius and liters. Um, during this video, when we give information, that's just how the gauges are here. So if you guys back home in America, you'll just have to uh, do some conversions. Uh, so sit back, watch it. Uh, should be pretty informative. I'll try to walk you through every little step. I've seen a lot of videos out there of people distilling, but uh, I've noticed that a lot of little things are left out. So I'll try to walk you through the way that, you know, through trial and error, through the way that I did it. And uh, hope you enjoy it. So what I'm going to do here is just turn this heat setting all the way up. I'm using an electric burner. I'll turn that setting up as high as it'll go. Uh, for about the first 30 minutes or so, I'm going, to, I'm going to stir this a little bit just to make sure that, try to make sure that, you know, no settlement gets on the bottom um, until it starts boiling. Yeah, from this point, uh, it's probably going to take almost an uh, hour and a half, two hours before uh, any before any whiskey starts running. So I'm just going to show you the basic setup we got here. This is a 30 liter still. Um, it's the temperature gauge there. Uh, I've got this little fan here. It just helps keep this um, condensing chamber a little bit cooler. Of course we're using uh, electric heat here. How this works is this uh, small submersible pump here pumps the cold water to the condensing chamber and then comes out the top one just back in here. In about another hour I will fill this whole uh, tub up with water and be putting, be putting these ice bottles in there too. It's important that you keep your water as cold as possible. I've got a little little uh, temperature gauge here that'll just hang in the water and it'll just let me keep track of how cold my water is. That's the basic setup. It's running now. I mean, well, it's the electricity is running to the burner. Uh, it'll be another hour or two maybe before it starts actually running any alcohol out. One thing that I would suggest that all of you guys do is when you're running your still, um, you know, for all, for all you new people that are running your still, no matter what your still is, what kind it is, you want to use all of your senses. You're going to be using your sight, obviously, uh, your smell. Your in the later stages, you're going to be tasting things and uh, touching. One of the ways that I know that it's time to uh, start putting my water here and start getting my water cold is that I just touch the top of the still. I mean, I know this sounds pretty simple, but uh, these are ways that you know when things are ready. So I touch the top of that. It's getting pretty warm. Uh, so I'm going to start putting some water here and some ice. And uh, right now we're at about uh, an hour and a half and uh, still running. So you want to make sure that you don't engage your submersible pump until after you're getting hot here in your temperature gauge if you're using a still like this. Um, in this particular still, once the temperature gauge rises up to about 65, I'll engage the pump, I'll turn the fan on, and uh, I'll back the heat down. Once it starts running, I'll back the heat down again 
and I basically back it down one setting here, um, one setting at a time, and uh, it'll be just a matter of minutes at that point for alcohol to be running out. Um, I'm about 45 minutes into this. Um, it's still not, it's definitely getting hot down here. Um, but I won't even start worrying about putting water and getting the water cold until I start feeling it heating up here. Right now it's pretty, it's just pretty cool to the touch. So it takes a while for, for the steel to heat up. Um, I'll try to give you some pointers as we go. Uh, one thing I can say too is that you want to make sure that when you're running uh, and you're heating, when you're heating the steel up, you don't want to move this steel at all. Um, I made the mistake of accidentally bumping into one um, a couple weeks back, and it just uh, it really kind of ruined it because it, it put up a lot of uh, debris and uh, just you know regular mash up into the condenser. So that was a bad move on my part. So yeah, just uh, make sure you're careful not to move this or bump into it or try to shake it or anything like that. So right now I'm just starting to put the water in this reservoir here and I'm going to start trying to cool it down. I just want to clarify that the reason you want to wait for a while, and in this case we waited almost an hour and a half from the time that we started the steel until the time that we're starting to worry about getting the water cold. The reason you wait is because obviously if you were to immediately uh, put your ice into this reservoir, by the time the steel actually starts running, it'll all be melted. So uh, you're, if you're doing it, the method that we're doing here today, um, you definitely want to wait for a little while before you have uh, cold, really cold water. Um, because we're using this small freezer right here to cool our ice down. Uh, we're just using regular water bottles. Another way of recycling. Um, we just freeze those. Obviously your space in something like this is limited so you only have so much ice you don't want to waste it. So uh, right now we're going on about an hour and 45 minutes into it. Um, I'm going to start unloading this freezer, uh, putting all the ice uh, bottles into here and we'll check back soon. Alright, so I've just loaded my ice into here. Um, as I said before, I'm gonna, I'll always keep an eye on this gauge here. You'll notice this gauge start going down really quickly. Uh, one thing I want to point out is obviously that's a lot of water bottles right there. Uh, it's a lot of ice. Uh, if, you're running, uh, if you're running any significant amount of alcohol in a setup like this, you're going to need a significant amount of freezer space. Uh, I will tell you that. So if you're going to try this at home, you better have some freezer space because you really need your water to be very cold uh, doing this method here, running the alcohol this way. And uh, that requires some freezer space. <clears throat> so we got this freezer here. Uh, and in fact, we ordered this here in China. Uh, it was probably the equivalent of about 80 bucks. So, and it works really well. Uh, but that freezer is, is for nothing but uh, our water bottles. So keep that in mind, freezer space. So what you guys are going to find that is with, with distilling uh, and with making moonshine in general, the process, a lot of times you're just going to, especially during this, the distilling process, a lot of times you're going to find yourself just kind of sitting around waiting. But then there's a crucial moment in which uh, some activity needs to happen. I'm reaching that moment right now. As you can see, the temperature gauge on, on my condensing unit is going up. For this particular steel, once that gets to 65, and when, it, and when the temperature starts going up, it starts going up really... Uh, what you'll see is you'll see that for a long time, the temperature gauge won't move at all for hours maybe and then all of a sudden it'll start going up so you need to be paying attention to it 
Uh, so what that means is you may be sitting around for a couple hours, nothing's going on, and then all of a sudden your temperature gauge starts moving, and if you're not watching it, uh, it could be uh, you, you could mess things up. So right now it's going up. It's going up at a pretty steady pace. So I know that what I'm going to do is when this still gets to 65, 65 degrees Celsius, what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the submersible pump. I'm going to turn on this fan here. I'm also going to back down on my temperature one setting. One thing I want to point out too is that our water temperature for our cooling water has went from around 24 degrees to around 16 degrees. That would probably still keep going down until we start running. Uh, again, there's no need to engage the submersible pump and start pumping cold water into our condensing unit until we are at a point where the alcohol is vaporizing, which is going to be around 65 degrees Celsius. Once we reach that point, I'm just going to uh, engage the submersible pump. I'll back down on the temperature. All right, so at this point, we're getting to around 60, 65-ish. At this time, I'm going to engage the submersible pump. It's going to start pumping some really cold water into our uh, condensing chamber. Just to note that our water right now is at around 14.7 degrees Celsius, and you can just feel the coolness coming off of that. That is very cold water, and that's exactly what you want. All right, just, so just as we predicted, we've started running here. This is the head that we're catching right now. Um, just to note that we're at exactly two hours, is exactly two hours. When we started, when we first put the heat to the mash, until the time that we're running. So again, we're gonna run off about 400 milliliters of this as the head, and we're gonna throw that away, and then we're gonna start collecting our hard-earned alcohol. All right, so we've thrown our heads away. What we're collecting right now is some really, really high proof uh, alcohol. I'm really interested to see if the little bit of strawberries that I put in that mash uh, makes any sort of difference in the flavor. I can smell a little bit of a fruity smell to it. Um, so this part is gonna be something that I'm really looking at. Just adding a tiny bit of strawberries, how much that make, how much of a difference that makes um, in the overall taste. Again, this, this alcohol here is intended to be uh, strawberry flavored anyway, which we will flavor it with strawberries. But uh, infusing that strawberry flavor in with the mash is what I'm really curious to see how it works out. Even just the, the little bit of strawberries that I put in with the mash. And this is one thing that you'll do when you're uh, making your mash and you're distilling is, you know, try different things. Try stuff. All right, so we got our first 500 milliliters of alcohol that we've run out of our still. Uh, one thing I like to do straight away is I'm going to filter this just through a regular coffee filter. Um, this is going to be my my container in which I box all of my alcohol in straight away. This alcohol here is very high percentage. You, this is too high to be drinking. I'm running off my next 500 milliliters. So what I'll do now is I'm going to check this 500 milliliters to see where we are as far as alcohol content. Uh, what I'm looking for is to get uh, my container to 55% alcohol. So whereas we start off, we may start off right here with uh, 60 to 70% alcohol. Uh, I'm going to keep running my still out until I'm just pulling off around 55% alcohol. I will keep running my still after that because alcohol is still going to continue to run out. Uh, you know, 40% alcohol is still a lot of alcohol content and that's in fact what most of your Jack Daniels, what much of most of your whiskey is today is 40% alcohol by volume. Uh, that's what's legal to sell in most places. 
so to say that I'm I, I'm definitely going to keep all of the alcohol that continues to run out of this. What I'll do with that alcohol is I'll add it to my next uh, run when I'm running my mash. As soon as I start running my mash, I'll just add this alcohol to that, and I uh, will continue to run it that way. So we're not wasting any alcohol. The alcohol that comes out after our 55%, we're going to be running that into our next uh, into our next run, to our next run of mash. So I'm about to test my first uh, run here, my first bit of alcohol off of the first run. Um, I don't think you can see that very well on the camera, but this uh, hygrometer measures from 40% to around 70%. I'm going to just drop this into my 100 milliliters of what we've run so far. I realize you guys are not going to be able to see this that well, but where we're at right now, 65% alcohol. That's, a, that's much higher than probably what I want to drink. So uh, it's a success, a good success. We're going to keep running that off. Our time right now is at around two and a half hours. We've ran 500 milliliters of alcohol plus another 200. So we've ran 700 milliliters. And I would guess that right now the overall alcohol uh, percentage is around uh, 63 to 65%. So we have a little time ahead of us and we're just going to keep uh, running it out. 100 milliliters at a time and testing it as we go. Now as we're going and we've already ran out about 700 milliliters of 65 percent alcohol, let's look back at our temperature gauge here. We are still at around, we're around 63 degrees Celsius. We're in a very optimum range right now of running alcohol. As you can see, it's not a fast process. Better have some patience. It's going to take some time. But we're going to keep an eye on this. Run it out 500 milliliters at a time and test it as we go. And keep an eye on our temperature gauge. As that, temp that temperature gauge will start to rise. As it starts to rise, uh, you're going to be running out less alcohol content by volume. So in this particular situation, if you've gotten to around 90 degrees Celsius, you're no longer running alcohol. That's going to be pretty much pure water vapor. So we're here at exactly three hours later, and we're about to run out our next 500 milliliters of alcohol, which is going to make a thousand milliliters total. As soon as this runs out, I'm going to add it to my boxing jug and test the alcohol content. Also note that our cooling water is still at 15 uh, degrees Celsius. Very cool. Very cool. Still temperature. We're at around 62 degrees Celsius. Still in a very optimum uh, range of running alcohol. So, so far this still is, a, is running exactly as the way that it's designed to run. We're producing a very high alcohol content, content right now. Excuse me. In case you didn't know, I've been drinking a little bit of it. Uh, so yes, we'll check back in on our next 500 milliliters. So we've ran our first thousand milliliters of alcohol. We've distilled it. The time now is almost exactly three hours later. We have exactly 1,000 milliliters of uh, distilled alcohol. I'm about to test it with the hydrometer here. I know you guys, it's not going to be easy for you guys to see this, and probably you can't see it. So I'm just going to reach down and try to get this video as best I can. 
we are still we are at 64 percent right now I'm, I'm sure you can't see it so we're running alcohol at three hours in 65 percent you might as well call it and as you can see our condensing chamber temperature is still hovering around 63 degrees Celsius which means that we are really producing some very high alcohol content right now we're at around 100 more milliliters I suspect that we will still keep running for another hour of good drinkable uh, corn whiskey and I will note to this that you can smell and taste a, a tad bit of the the little bit of strawberries that I put into that mash you, you can tell a tiny bit of difference there's times when there's nothing to do during those times your wife might want to sing karaoke Alright, so now we're at it almost about uh, three hours and 20 minutes in. We've just ran uh, another 500 milliliters, so we're at 1500 milliliters. At, from the time when we started our still, from the time we started our still, we're at about three hours and 20 minutes. Condensing chamber temperature is holding steady at around 63. Perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is add this to what we've already collected and check the alcohol content. So we're here at 3 hours and 20 minutes. Um, we've just ran our first 1,500 milliliters of corn liquor. I'm about to test our last results here. Again, I apologize if you guys cannot see this. I'm looking through the viewfinder. I don't, I don't think you can. Right now, we are at 60%. So we still have another 5% to run off. Um, maybe that will give you some sort of uh, insight on why I run it 500 milliliters at a time on this ratio. I suspect by the by the time this next uh, 500 milliliters run off we'll, we'll be at around 58-59% uh, we're going to keep on running it until we're down to 55 at that point we'll stop keeping the alcohol that we'll collect uh, as far as what we're going to be drinking and we'll just keep running it out we'll keep running it out from 55% on down until the time when our temperature is getting right and uh, we'll just add that into our next uh, distillation I hope all this makes sense I, you know as I'm saying it, I, I'm, I'm realizing that it might not make much sense to those beginners who are just starting to try and if it doesn't make much sense to you leave a comment and I will try to answer your questions but uh, still running everything successful at this moment very proud of what we're producing it smells incredible it smells really good this is a very good whiskey and so as I'm here running uh, I'm just going to do a little thing that the old school guys used to do just to prove to you guys that this ain't no BS right here so I'm going to take a little bit out of this first 1500 milliliters that we've ran. Put a little bit in here. We're going to do the flame test. 
I might should have prepared lighter before I did this. Alright, here we go. And there you have it, folks. See that blue flame? If you think this is not the real deal, there's your proof. There is your proof. Alright, so we're on hour number four now. We're almost exactly four hours from the time that we started the still, from the time that we put the heat to it. This is our next 500 milliliters, which makes about 2,000 milliliters in all. I'm going to pull this out and test it. We're still at a very optimum range of running alcohol. Still around 63%. Uh, 63 degrees um, rather and uh, it's going to continue running very good as long as we keep it in this temperature range we are going to be doing very well alright so one of the million things that can happen while you're running is in this round right now what just happened is all of a sudden this uh, electric burner just turned off I was in the bar of our clubhouse and I walked back in here and I noticed that the temperature was way down I'm like, what's going on? Well, what happened is this, somehow this burner is on some kind of a thermostat where it turned itself off. So it's turned off. We're into uh, about 2,300 milliliters uh, of running, but I don't know how it's going to run out from here on out. Just one of the many things that could go wrong you got to keep away uh, you got you got to keep your not away but you got to keep there don't step away from the place which is what I did I stepped away because I thought we were uh, in a nice groove and as soon as I stepped away something happens all right so we are four hours in we've had a few mishaps four hours in I'm about to test the last 500 milliliters out of this is the 500 milliliters by itself we had a little mishap so I want to just test and see how it's coming out and even that by itself we are still it's 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 honestly almost pretty incredible in that we're uh, this last 500 milliliters is at about 57% alcohol. So by the time we mix it with this, that in itself would be around uh, probably 62. So we're still running. Four hours in, we're still running good, drinkable, clean, good tasting, good smelling alcohol. So everyone, we, we're at five hours now. We just finished running the last of the 55%. What we have in this, uh, I would say that it's probably a gallon and a half, maybe. That's a pretty big container. Um, that's all 55%. It's as close as 55% as you can get. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're still at five hours. This is a testament to how long this takes. It's not a, it's not for people who are uh, not patient. I would think that we're going to probably continue to run out another 1,500. Another 1,500 milliliters for sure out of here. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to pour it right back into our mash that we run on the next run. So we'll ferment our mash and then when our mash is ready, right before we cook it, we're going to pour this into it, which will elevate the alcohol content. So, just to follow up four hours into it, we've already uh, distilled out the drinkable alcohol that we want to keep, 55% alcohol. Uh, it's going to continue to run for maybe another hour or so. And we're just going to keep running this out. Again, what we're going to do with what comes out of this, and this is still high alcohol. If you were to smell this, 
it would smell like some bad, I mean, which is more than 40%. But for our purposes, we're not going to keep this. What we're going to do is on our next run of mash, is just add this to the mash once we distill it. Let's say our mash at that point is at 10%. Once we add this 1,000 milliliters to it of fairly high proof alcohol, obviously it's going to run that on up to 15% maybe. And at that point, uh, we're going to be distilling. So it's, it's all about, you know, not throwing away what you distill. You, you keep what you want to drink at the percentage of what you want to drink it at. But uh, that's not to say that you have to throw everything away after that. There's still a use for it. So we're going to still keep running, and we'll check back in in maybe another hour or so. Guys, six hours later, it's all cleaned up, ready to go. Six hours. Six hours. We started off with maybe maybe around uh, 20 liters of mash. We've ended up with probably two liters of straight 55% alcohol. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learn a little something off of it. Um, we'll continue to post videos up and hopefully you guys will uh, like these. Like, subscribe, comment. Shout out to Warpaint members, Warpaint supporters. Love you bros.